using a prompt file with an AI can turn the experience from just okay to great. Specifying what the AI should do, how it should think about problems, how it should proceed, and more can make a huge difference. Recently, I showed you Beast Mode, a large prompt file from Burke Holland at Microsoft. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a prompt file in VS Code as part of your work with an AI to accomplish a goal. Now, I often hear that people don't realize what I provide for free. So let's do a quick recap. I have nine full free courses here on YouTube in playlists. I also have a 10th full free course on imtimcorey.com as well. I have a podcast both here on YouTube and on your favorite podcast app that answers dev questions. There's over five years of once a week content on there about how to be a better developer. This channel is also closing in on almost 900 training videos on C Sharp and the surrounding technologies. If you want to be a better developer, there are free resources right here to help you out. And if you want to help support all this free content, or if you want the easier path, I offer paid courses on imtimcorey.com as well. So let's get into using AI prompt files in VS Code. Now, here I have Beast Mode already installed in my application. We have it selected here in the configure modes. If you want to know how to do that, you configure modes, create a new custom mode, say GitHub chat modes, give it a name and paste in the information. I showed you how to do that in the Beast Mode introduction video. But here what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how to utilize Beast Mode to do something with our code. Now, this is my website. This is actually imtimcorey.com. Let's go ahead and start this up. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a slight tweak. So here I have our learning paths. And if you select learning paths, this is something that people asked for is what to do in what order. Now, just so you know, you can select the learning path, but this is the order and this is re kind of required versus optional. So gray is optional, required is the black and they're in order. So start here and there. I have people ask, but C Sharp Fundamentals down here. Yes, that's a skill check course that's testing your fundamentals that you've learned up here. So this is learning paths, but I want to add a little bit of of pizzazz to. I want to add a little bit of, um, I don't know, a, a bit of animation to it to make it a little different. So right here we have this arrow, which if you click this, will take you to that particular learning path. Cool. But if I mouse over it, it doesn't really tell me, hey, you can do this or you can go there. So what I want to do is this arrow is angled up. And I think it's about a 30 degree angle, um, but from, from horizontal, but we'll have to figure that out as we go. What I want to happen is I want this to point to the right, like pull the arrow down until it's, it's horizontal pointing to the right. Okay. And then you mouse off it. It goes back to where it is currently. That's what I want to happen. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, I am going to use a snipping tool and I'm going to grab a snipping, a snip, of just that as a screenshot. So if you're not familiar with the snipping tool, is the Windows key plus Shift plus S, and it grabs a little um, screenshot of whatever you want. So that's now my clipboard. Okay, you can actually do it. You can say copy again if you really want to, if you don't, you aren't sure. But what we're going to do is now we're going to take this off a of screen, and I am going to ask beast mode with just GPT-4.1, not even 5.0 or anything special with Claude or anything else, just GPT-4.1. We're going to ask it to rotate that. Now, I am going to give it a little bit of help in the factoring of my source and in my, I believe it's includes, partials, transparent nav. I'm going to put my file here just so it has the starting point to know, oh, that's probably where it is, but we don't even need to do that if you don't want. It will search my files. So what I'm going to do is say um, in my navigation menu, under the uh, learning paths section, I want the arrow. 
that is currently pointing to the, uh, let's call it uh, north east at about a 30 degree angle to rotate down to the horizontal. when you mouse over it. When you mouse off of it, I want it to go back to the starting point. Here is a screenshot of what it looks like currently. Um, and let's just leave it like that. We'll probably have to tell it um, you know, where to put the CSS or something like that. But let's just start there and see how it does. Now, this is using beast mode. So it'll be a, a little bit different than what you might have expect, expected. For example, here's my plan. Identify the correct selector for the arrow SVG in the learning path menu. And then add the CSS class to target the arrow. Add a hover effect. Test and verify that it worked. Okay, so it's added some, the site.css. If we... Um, look over here, we've also seen how it's um, made a tweak to the, um, the icon with a new class, okay? And it has completed a to-do list. And now this is what added to the site.css, which is in, it put it at the, above the root of my CSS. I would wanna move that, but it's in the correct CSS. It found site.css, okay? So let's go over and look at what it, looks like now learning paths. If I mouse, well, this one's already interesting. Um, it only does the one and it looks like if I don't mouse, if I don't hover over it, it's pointing to the right. And if I hover over it, it goes back to the kind of starting point. So I want to flip those two and I want it to happen for all of the arrows, not just the starting point, but it, it decided what to do. It made those changes and it, you know, we're on the right path, okay? Um, I want you to flip um, what happens when the hover effect currently is the, um, is what I want the um, resting, uh, icon to be. Um, also, please apply this to the other arrows on the um, other learning paths. Okay, so only selected the one because that's the one I took a screenshot of. It probably would be more helpful to apply it, you know, to show all of those in the screenshot. Um, but it should change from 30 degrees to zero and from zero to 30 degrees. Again, I could have done that, um, but that's okay. Um, so it's it's making a, a tweak to update the arrows and again, zero to 30. And now it should be done. Notice it checked off all the steps it had to do. So we go to learning paths and we hover over. Um, hilariously, no, they all rotate now. Um, that's not what we want. So we need to um, say, nope, now they all rotate when I hover over any of them. I want it to rotate just the image I am over. Or the, uh, just the, I do kind of like the, um, the, the learning, path I am over. So let's have it tweak that. So if you notice, it's got the um, hover over. Let's see how it's, you know, you have to tweak an AI. It doesn't always do the right thing. Um, and right now I'm just focused on, is it doing what I'm hoping it to do, hoping it does? And yes, right now it is doing what I hope for it to do. So whenever I hover over one of the sections, it rotates that arrow. 
just a little animation here to kind of say, hey, something's happening. Uh, we could change colors, you could do all kinds of fun stuff. But the big deal here is that it figured out, okay, we have an SVG, we can rotate that. Here's how to rotate that. It's just a transform, uh, but it also does, um, you know, some, some work here that maybe I don't know how to do, and it doesn't transform in 0.3 seconds. We could make that slower. We could do all kinds of fun things. But the big deal here is that when you're talking to AI, it's making some additional choices based upon that beast mode uh, prompt file. So this allows for a better overall prompt while I'm still giving it, you know, half formed prompts of my own. Like, like this is not this in-depth uh, diatribe on how exactly I want things to work. I'm giving it more generalized instructions, which is why I didn't get it quite right at first, but the prompt file helps put some guardrails around it and it helps give me a bit more uh, content or give the, uh, the AI a bit more context of how I want it to operate. So you can create your own prompt file with here's how we lay out files, here's how we do things, and then, or add to beast mode, and now it's, you know, your beast mode. Um, but you can make it how you want so that whenever you're doing prompting like this, your sentences don't have to be this long thing. They just have to be close enough. And then the um, the the one chat file, the one prompt file that you have created will do the rest of the work and making sure that it operates how you expect it to or want it to. OK, so that's um, that's how you can integrate um, a, a prompt like this into your workflow. It's how you use it. It's pretty straightforward to start using it, um, you know, we haven't gone in depth here on making sure the AI is doing things the right way. I encourage you, um, AIs don't always do the right thing. Like this right here, I'd probably want to put down in my CSS a little further than top. Um, I might not want to use this exactly the same way, but I think I actually made some good choices here because of the fact that, I mean, it, it made uh, one line change here, uh, one line change here, and it really is, it's just adding a CSS class that's actually probably the right thing to do. So just make sure that you review the changes and make sure that it hasn't gone off the rails and done anything weird like, you know, adding this right class for, for four out of the five, but the fifth one is something off, okay? But once you've got something you like, you can just keep that and then um, you're good to go. So that's how to use a prompt file in VS Code. Thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.